Hello. All right. Let me share my screen with you. And we'll get started with today's lesson. Let's see, lesson eight. All right, so you should be able to see my screen. I'm gonna go over here and enlarge in this slideshow, play from start. All right, so grade one, module three, unit two, lesson eight, learning target. Let's get our bow and arrow together. Let's read our first, our first learning target. I can research information about different types of bird beaks using the text bird beaks. Awesome. All right, let's take a look at this yellow bubble. It says, I know that break means to separate into two pieces or more. Two pieces or more would be plural, right? Not singular. I know that crack means to break without splitting into pieces, like two pieces. They both have similar meanings, but break is a stronger verb than crack. So we have break and we have crack. They basically mean the same thing. They're synonyms, right? So I did attach a video about synonyms. Please make sure that you watch that video prior. All right, next learning target. Let's get our bow and arrow ready. I can research information about different types of bird beaks using the text beaks. Awesome, so we're gonna be using beaks in the blue bubble. It says, what are a few different types of beaks and how do they help birds? So today we're gonna to focus on pages 11, 12, and 13. Yesterday we focused on um, a few different birds. We focused on hummingbirds, eagles, and woodpeckers, right? So what are a few different types of beaks and how do they help birds? So let's think back to yesterday. We had the hummingbird. So the hummingbird has a long beak or bill, we can refer to it as bill, a long beak or bill that helps drink nectar. We have an eagle that has a sharp beak to help rip up flesh. And we have a woodpecker. The woodpecker's beak is strong to help it peck holes, either to find food or to store food. So let's take a look at page 11. Flamingos. I'm going to reread this page to you. You should have watched the video about beaks once more so that way you remember, get a good refresher in your brain of the book. Beaks are even made upside down. Flamingos. A flamingo's beak looks ridiculous until you see how the flamingos eats. The flamingo eats. Flamingos feed with their head upside down. Standing in shallow lakes and marshes, they draw water through their beaks by using their muscular tongue as pumps. Special strainers in the beak filter out any tiny plants or animals that the flamingo eats. Pigments in these foods give flamingos their bright, dizzy, dizzying colors. So, flamingos, think about it. What kind of beaks do they have? They have upside down beaks, and what does it help them do? How do they help the birds? It helps it eat, right? It has these filters through it and basically it, it takes in all of the water and it pushes out all of the water and what's left is the food. It's kind of like a strainer. If you guys ever have made um, pasta or spaghetti with your parents, they'll have a strainer and they pour in the boiling water and the pasta, the noodles, and when it strains, it strains the solid from the liquid. Then we have a skimmer. So skimmers, let me read this section to you again. A skimming beak. Skimmers, like the flamingo's beak, a skimmer's beak looks like an accident. The bottom bill is longer than the top. The skimmer puts its backward beak to good use. To hunt, the bird flies with its lower bill slicing below the water surface. When it strikes a fish, the bird snaps its beak shut, trapping the fish in a scissor-like grip in this way, skimmers can catch fish without even getting wet. So what kind of beaks do they have? A skimming beak. So their bottom jaw is lower. It's longer um, because it basically flies above the water as it slices through its bottom jaw. Its mouth is open and that bottom jaw is slicing just beneath the water's surface in order to fill any fish. Once it fills a fish, it does a scissor-like, it's kind of like my 
My index and uh, my middle finger, similar to yours, the bottom jaw is going to be longer than the top jaw. And as soon as that bottom uh, beak actually feels the fish, it shuts. It shuts in a scissor-like grip. And we have a swishing beak, spoon bills. Spoonbills have flat paddle-shaped beaks to find food. Um, to find food, spoonbills wade into shallow water and swish open their beaks back and forth. At the same time, the birds use their feet to stir up mud and the animals in it. Like skimmers, they hunt by touch, snapping their beaks closed on insects, fish, and other prey. Hunting in groups probably helps spoonbills stir up more food than hunting alone. So what kind of beaks do they have? They have swishing beaks, so they're paddle-like beaks. And basically these paddles move back and forth in the water. So it kind of moves back and forth. And as soon as they feel like a fish in their beaks, they snap it shut. That way they can eat. All right, take a look at that word strainer. So I provided some pictures like I, I just said previously. Um, strainers are, it basically allows the separation of the solid and liquid. So when you strain, if you wash your fruit, all of the dirty water goes out of the strainer. If you drain your pasta. All right, let's take a look at that blue box. It says, what types of beaks do the headings describe? Oh, so we're gonna look at page 11, 12, and 13, and we're gonna answer what types of beaks do the headings describe? So let's take a look at 11. Beaks are even made upside down. They're talking about a flamingo be beak being upside down. A skimming beak, what kind of beak are they talking about? A skimming beak and a swishing beak. What kind of beak are they talking about? A swishing beak. Has anyone in your family had any experiences with these birds? A flamingo, a skimmer, or a spoonbill? Ask them. All right, take a look at our chart. How do birds use their beaks to survive? So we have three different columns. Remember columns run up and down, and we have three different rows. They run side to side. So it says, describe the beak in the first column. How does this beak help the bird survive? And example, name of bird with a pic, uh, name of bird with picture. So describe the beak. You can see that the beak is dot, dot, dot. That's gonna be a sentence frame. The beak is dot, dot, dot. That's like a sentence frame. So I went ahead and filled this out for us step by step. So our first bird we're going to be focusing on is a flamingo. We're going to kind of work backwards. So the flamingo, describe its beak upside down. And how does this beak help the bird survive? Special strainers in the beak filter out water to help them eat tiny plants and animals. All right, next bird we're going to go to is the skimmer. The skimmer. Describe the beak. So we're going to go to this box. We're jumping around. That's all right. The bottom bill is longer than the top. And how does this beak help the bird to survive? The bottom beak is longer than the top to slice the water below the surface. All right, what was that last bird we talked about today? That's right, a spoon bill. Describe. Describe the spoonbill's beak. Flat paddle-like. How does this beak help the bird survive? The beak snaps shut as their beak swishes back and forth. Good job, guys. All right, so we've done a few language dives. So in this language dive, we're gonna look at one of our sentences. Um, we're gonna actually look at to find Food, spoonbills wade into shallow water. I'm gonna repeat that. To find food, spoonbills wade into shallow water. All right, so we're gonna take a look at, at this kind of step by step. So let's go back to that sentence. Who are we talking about? If I were to say who, I'm gonna reread the sentence. To find food, spoonbills wade into shallow water. So who are we talking about? 
That's right, the spoon bills, spoon bills. So anything highlighted, that's what we're gonna focus on. So who, in a sentence, we usually have, it answers questions, it answers who, what, where, when, why, how. So in a question, that's why when you guys give me single answer uh, words for the answers, I'm like, oh my goodness, if you guys just tell me, bird. I'm like, what, what, what are you talking about? Bird, there's no information, you don't tell me who, what kind of bird where the bird's at, what the bird's doing. You gotta tell me everything. So spoon bills, that's the who in our sentence. Now let's take a look at wade because it is highlighted. Spoon bills wade into shallow water. Hmm. If we look at the picture again, what do you think wade means? Do you think it means fly above? Do you think it means sitting on shore? So if you, uh, if you guessed walk, that would be correct. Spoonbills pretty much walk into shallow water. So they wade, they wade in shallow water. So spoonbills do what? They wade. Who? Spoonbills, what do they do? Wade. Shallow water. What part of the sentence does this, what, what question does this answer? Shallow water. So spoonbills who? Do what? Wade? Where? Where do they wade? In shallow water. They don't wade at the mall. They don't wade at the Villa Bella playground. They wade in shallow water. So who? Spoonbills. Do what? Wade? Where? Into shallow water. Oh, let's take a little bit a closer look. We're going to narrow in on shallow. Shallow. Why did I highlight shallow? What? What type of word is that? What type of word is that? Remember the ice cream and then the ice cream cone with sprinkles on it and cookies and cherries, maybe chocolate syrup? Yep, that's right, my friends. Shallow would be an adjective. It's a descriptive. It's a descriptive word. So spoonbills is the who, which we can also, um, we also know it as a noun, the who, what, where, when, why. So spoonbills is our noun of the sentence. Wade, they do what? Where? In shallow water and shallow. Shallow is an adjective. Say adjective. Let's put our hand on our chin. Say adjective. How many syllables? Good job. Three. All right. So now we notice on this sentence, why isn't spoonbills capitalized? It does make sense. Spoonbills wade into shallow water, period, right? but we have more information about the sentence. So who? The spoonbills. Do what? Wade into where? The shallow water. And now take a look. Why? If I asked a why in this sentence, now what's highlighted to find food? That's our why. So spoonbills. Who? Do what? Wade. Where? Shallow water. Why? To find food. Simple enough, right? I think that's it for our lesson, friends. I actually had to record that twice. My screen wasn't showing up and I was just talking the whole time without the slideshow. So hopefully the slideshow recorded. I'll see you guys later.